Hello, I'm Catherine Levesque. I'm a knight from the Third Crusade. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm an author uh, with 35 books on Amazon, most of them medieval. And today we're going to talk about one of my novels called Rise of the Defender. Um, this book takes place in 1192 AD. It's one of the earlier novels of mine. Uh, most of them take place between about 1200 and 1500. Uh, but Rise of the Defender and another one called uh, While Angels Slept take place a little bit earlier. Um, so anyway, let's talk about Rise of the Defender. It's another one of those big mega epic books. Um, actually, this one is the biggest one out of the me mega epics. There's three mega epics, The Wolf, The Dark One, Dark Knight, and Rise of the Defender. These were the first three novels I ever wrote before I realized that there was such a thing as uh, a limit on how long of a novel you could write, how many pages you could write. Um, so I think they got progressively bigger until an agent told me, you know, they, they can really only be up about 400 pages and I'm writing like 1200. So Rise of the Defender is actually three times the size of a normal novel. Um, that being said, it is a freaking medieval soap opera. There's just no other way to describe it. It really is a medieval soap opera. It's Game of Thrones before there ever was such a thing. Um, if you like soap operas, this one's for you. We have in this corner, Christopher Delore. He is our, our hero. He's, he's the, the main guy. He's, um, a champion for Richard the Lionheart. Um, they call him the lion's claw because even a lion is only as strong as his claws. And Christopher is the claw. Now he has been with Richard in the Middle East. Um, this is just after the fall of Ocker. And he has come home because, well, number one, the, the battle's over for him. But when he was in the Holy Land after the Battle of Ocker, he made a promise uh, to a dying comrade. This comrade made Christopher promise that he would come home and marry this man's daughter, uh, who was described even by her father as being incorrigible. Now, Christopher knows that this dying comrade, who has since died, um, is a very wealthy man. So he he's thinking, okay, I'm going to go back to England. I'm going to marry this girl. I'm going to inherit the title, the castle, the money, and then I'll be gone. Well, it doesn't quite work like that. Um the lady Dustin Barrington has other ideas. She doesn't want to be married at all. So when Christopher shows up, of course, she's she's reluctant. She really doesn't want to have anything to do with him. But um, because, it was her, it, because it was her father's dying wish, she marries him. So they get married, and Christopher, his original plan was to marry her and just take off, go back to London, because he had a lot of stuff he had to do for Richard, because Richard's on his way home, and Christopher's kind of the... the uh, scout the lead party you know he's out there to kind of check out the scene see what's going on before the king comes home so he's got a lot of stuff he's got to do so he figures he's just going to leave for london anyway but strange thing happens after marrying dustin he decides that maybe he wants to stick around a little bit and um get to know his new wife who really does not want anything to do with him um so the story is kind of the process of them two people who really did not want to be married um, finding love in each other. I mean, it, it is surprising to both of them that they fall in love with each other. But it is a very sweet and very true love story. There's a lot of problems, however. Um, one of them being that when Christopher came back, he brought a lot of knights with him. He has a kind of this, this pack of knights that he travels with. Um, one of them falls in love with Dustin, his very best friend, Marcus Burton. Um, Marcus kind of loses his moral compass in this story because he thinks he is so in love with Dustin that nothing else matters, including his relationship with Chris. Um, and he really goes through most of the novel with Chris and, and Marcus kind of being at odds with each other. Now, Dustin being pr pretty naive, um, she, she never succ succumbs to Marcus she finds him attractive because he's a hot guy, but 
you know, she loves Chris and she's with Chris, but, but Marcus just won't let up. And, and it really comes to the point where, um, you got to wonder if Marcus is really in love with Dutch, Dustin as much as he just thinks she's a prize to be won another competition with Christopher, something, you know, that, that prize to be won. Um, so as far as being a medieval soap opera, it's got a lot of highs and a lot of lows. It is a long book. You will meet kings. You will see tournaments. You will see battles. You will see death. You will see life. You will meet uh, the precursor. Well, not the precursor, but perhaps the truth behind the Robin Hood legend. I mean, that's all included in this. We've got a sheriff of Nottingham. We've got an evil prince. It is a hell of a book. If you haven't read it, you must absolutely read it. So that being said, Thank you for watching this video. You can check out all my novels at www.katherinelevesque.com. And I love to hear from my readers. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you so much. See you with the next video.